I'm joined now by jeweler Matt Brunig. Matt, thank you for coming out today. Your stuff is so beautiful. I thank want you. all of it. Um, I want to know how you got into making jewelry. Um, I was always uh, interested in art as a kid, and uh, probably my junior year in high school, my dad was kind of concerned of what I was going to do when I grew up because I wasn't the best uh, academic student. So I took an aptitude test. He worked at a, a college out in Nebraska and uh, listed out about 150 jobs, and jeweler stuck out to me for some reason. Out of 150 jobs, jeweler is what stood out. Yep. That's amazing. Yeah. So what what is your next step after that? Do you well, enroll this, in a class or? This was uh, pre-internet and I uh, have to say hats off to my folks as far as doing research on uh, where you could study to become a jeweler. Um, it was uh, the early 90s and there was two schools, one in Champaign, Illinois and one in Paris, Texas. And uh, I ended up going to the Te Texas Institute of Jewelry Technology and I often say, I studied in Paris. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Nobody knows the difference. Yeah. Um, so what do, what do those studies include? I, I, I would have no idea what you learn uh, to, to become a jeweler. Um, it's a vocational school, so it's all hands-on. Um, the first uh, semester, it's a total of 18 months, and the first semester is to uh, learn the basics, how, what your tools are able to able to do and then it carries on and uh, gets into more jewelry repair, casting, stone setting and then the final semester is uh, working in fine metals, uh, platinum, gold, silver. So do you design all of your pieces? Yes I do. And how do you go about doing that? Does it start with a sketch and and then you acquire the materials or how do you well, um, I'm more of a three-dimensional type of a guy. I've always been more of a sculptural type of a guy. Uh, so I don't do a whole lot of sketching um, previous to, to making a piece. Often the stone gauges uh, how I'm going to uh, design a ring to, to hold it safely and um, you know, aesthetically pleasing. Uh, so I often go through either a process of carving a wax model uh, to house the stone, then casting that in uh, whatever metal, silver, gold, um, or I fabricate where I take just uh, flat pieces of stock, um, manipulate them into the shapes that I want, and uh, solder and fabricate the entire piece. What is the process of going from a wax model to a creating a piece? Um, what I'll do is I'll take that wax model and I'll case it in plaster. Um, it's actually called investment, uh, but it's about the same consistency of plaster of Paris. And then I put that uh, plaster mold into a kiln at 1500 degrees, everything burns away. I'm left with a hollow cavity inside of that plaster and then I pour molten metal into it. So how do you acquire your materials? Where do you find the stones that you use and, uh, and all of the different metals? Uh, a lot of the stones that uh, people will see at art shows um, are uh, previously loved gemstones. Mm. I get a lot of them uh, from estate jewelers where they were probably uh, set into a piece that was gold. Unfortunately, the gold was scrapped and then, then the stones um, are made available to me. I reset them in silver, which make them a little bit more affordable for everyone. And they are just stunning. But you don't work just in silver. You also do gold and platinum, is that? Yep, and then I also do some sculptural pieces in alternate metals like bronze and copper. Now, what is the biggest difference between the metals? Is there one that's easiest to work with? Um, I. Uh, I've been a goldsmith for many years, and I'd say that, uh, that gold is probably the most jeweler-friendly material to, to work with, although um, I've really come around to uh, being a silversmith, and that's uh, truly my passion over the last 10 years. I've been a jeweler for over 25 and uh, self-employed for the last 10, and uh, just really enjoyed silversmithing uh, because the, uh, the expense of the materials is a little bit less so I can afford to make some mistakes. I was going to ask you that. So, you know, if you're a painter, you aren't investing nearly as much in creating your art. Are you ever just terrified because you're working with these precious materials? Um, no, because it's all recyclable. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if, uh, if you mess up a piece, and it's, or you just decide it's, it's not, not good enough, uh, you can always remelt it and manipulate it into something else again. 
I imagine you do a lot of commission work, but for the pieces that you come up with on your own, where does the inspiration come from? Um, often from the stones. Um, I also make some steampunk type things um, with the uh, watch parts. And so that really uh, gauges what the final piece is going to look like. I um, often get inspiration just from, for instance, a watch part or something like that that uh, you know looks like something else to me. Um, and then I try and uh, repurpose it in that way, you know. I think I saw a, a ring with like a little gear. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, they're so cool. Yeah. You also do jewelry repairs. Is that as gratifying as creating something of your own? Well, I've always said that that's, uh, you know, the bread and butter of the business, you know, and I always want to offer uh, first and foremost a service to people. Often people see uh, the things that I create and they ask um, about repair or remounting a stone that they've inherited that just isn't their style. Um, you know, so uh, I always, uh, you know, that, that is uh, my background is, uh, is being in repair and things like that. So I do uh, enjoy being creative, but I, um, I also like to be able to, if it's just sizing a ring for someone, to make it able for them to wear again. You know, that's very gratifying. How has your artistry evolved from your time in Paris mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, to now? Um, I would say that it's finally come full circle. I got involved in jewelry because uh, it was art related as something that interests me and I thought that because of that aptitude test, um, thanks dad. Um, <laughs> that <laughs> I bet you were not happy at the time. <laughs> no, I wasn't, I wasn't exactly sure, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, finally after being self-employed over the last 10 years, it's come full circle where it's uh, really a, a creative uh, process. What do you think is the hardest part of, of your job? Um, I'm most challenged with stone setting. Um, and uh, I, I think because every stone is different, some are more fragile than others. Um, you know, and then of course the shape. You know, if, if a stone has a, has a point on the end of it, that course, uh, there, there's a higher risk of breakage and things like that with something like that. So it's a constant challenge and you have to be adjusting um, to the circumstance of, of each individual stone and their characteristics. All of your um, rings certainly are gorgeous. I also see a little sense of humor in some of your work. I was telling you um, my favorite piece that I saw wa uh, were your bison tenniel earrings, literally little bison. <laughs> it's so cute. But how do you how do you create that? Is that another I, the mold? Yep, yep, that is a uh... Uh, original wax carving and then uh, have a mold of that to be able to reproduce it quicker and you know have a pair that match exactly. So you said the hardest part is setting the stones. What is the best part, the most gratifying part of your work? Uh, the finished product for sure. You know finally seeing something col come you know full circle to completion. I've had some you know sculptural type pieces uh, that I've done in the past that uh, have been very time consuming. Um, you know I, one piece in particular is a a steampunk motorcycle and I have about 40 hours in that in that piece alone. Uh, so I, I initially could see the finished product in my head, it just took a long time to get there and about halfway through that project I was kind of scratching my head going, what am I doing here? Wow. How, how do you work? Do you, uh, I mean, are you setting aside several hours to work on the motorcycle piece for example or do you do it in little chunks at a time. Little chunks, uh, short sprints. I say, you know, um, I'll uh, honestly get manic. You know, sometimes I'll work late in the evening and things like that. And so it's, uh, you know, when the inspiration strikes, especially on something like that. Um, whereas, whereas maybe just uh, making a multitude of several several rings with just a single stone in it, you can, you know, mass produce that. I've always been a production jeweler by trade. And uh, so that's uh, definitely my knack. Uh, you know, I know my, my strengths and, uh, you know, so something like that. But often, you know, a more complex project, I'll try and take myself away from that for a moment. Um, even just mow the lawn and then the, <laughs> uh, the inspiration will kind of strike as you're, you know, doing something else. So. Do you have a favorite piece? Um, a current favorite, I would have to say, is um, I do a lot of insect jewelry. And uh, my current favorite is um, a piece that's called a cicada killer. And it's a combination of an organic casting and a steampunk piece. What does it feel like to know that your art 
is most likely going to be passed down through families and, and generations. Do you ever consider that? You know, one of the most gratifying things is uh, my wife and I, we do about 25 art shows per year on average. And uh, um, one of the most gratifying things is a mom and a daughter uh, coming up and, and maybe picking her first stone, whether it be her birth stone or just something that, that a kid finds cute, you know, and I often uh, will size that ring for their middle finger so that they can grow into it with their ring finger. Mm. So just, you know, e even if it's a, kind of an inexpensive item, it's, uh, it's nice to have that uh, personal gratification immediately, you know, with, uh, you know, a moment that's being shared with a family. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, it's nice. Jewelry is so personal because obviously you wear it on your person. Um, do you, do you consider that when, when you're working, that this is not going to be a piece of art hung on the wall, but shown probably daily to yeah, people? Yeah, we wearable art. Um, yeah, and often um, inspiration comes from people that come to me with a custom idea. People often see what I do and they ask if I can do something that's, you know, completely out of left, left field. And uh, so I, I love inspiration from others and, and uh, it, it is, uh, it's really nice to, to kind of bounce ideas back and forth between a customer and I and, and then finally have a finished product and, and being able to see how happy they are. Whereas uh, when I was more of a corporate jeweler, somebody behind the scenes, you don't get to see that final step of the customer being happy. So. Well, the next time I need a gorgeous gift for a lady in my life, I will definitely um, be looking at some of your pieces. Thank you so much for taking the time and for all of your beautiful work. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Arts in Focus on PBS Fort Wayne is funded in part by The Hour Foundation and the Community Foundation of Greater Fort Wayne.